Snestrack. When it comes to quote-unquote hidden gems on the Super Nintendo, sometimes you gotta take the bad with the good. Take a game like Carrier Aces, made for the SNES in January 1995 by Synergistic Software. They made two other games I've already covered on this channel, Spectre and Air Cavalry, and they're okay-ish, I suppose. As you can see, Carrier Aces is a dogfighting game where you fly around and try and shoot the other guy. It takes place in 1943 during World War II, and you choose between playing as the Americans or as the Japanese, as well as versus the computer or against a second player. Now, it seems like there's two dozen games just like this, like Turn and Burn No Fly Zone, or Lock On, or Wings 2 Aces High, or Super Strike Eagle, but thankfully Carrier Aces does stand out a bit, and the highlight of this game is the structure. There's eight different missions to complete in any order, each featuring different objectives. One mission has you attacking an island, one has you defending it, some missions are all-out dogfights, and some are bombing raids. And after choosing a mission, then you build your squadron from the planes available on your aircraft carrier. Each side has four planes to choose from, there's fighters, dive bombers, and torpedo bombers, and of course you'll want to pick the right aircraft for the right mission. What's cool is that the manual goes into some significant detail on the differences between the American and Japanese planes, describing their strengths and flying styles, as well as pointing out different techniques you can do. Like here, where it explains how to attack bombers and how to defend as bombers, pointing out the blind spots those planes have. Wait a second, what's this? Use the Hellcat whenever possible? The Wildcat is inferior to the Hellcat in every way? Well, why is the Wildcat even in the game then? Before each mission starts, you'll switch to an overhead tactical view. You pick which plane you want to control, and you go into dogfight mode. And this is where we get to the only real problem with Carrier Aces, and it's unfortunately that uh, the gameplay isn't all that great. Some of that is because the game is almost too clever for its own good. Carrier Aces went for a realistic bent here, and flying with old, limited planes from the 1940s feels much differently than flying with fighter jets from the 90s, and the game suffers for it. It sounds really silly on the surface, but I much prefer the gameplay in games like Turn and Burn No Fly Zone or Super Strike Eagle just because fighter jets are much more fun to control instead of creaky old World War II planes. Also, there's no on-screen radar in Carrier Aces. You gotta use that tiny arrow there and try and chase down your opponent. The A button fires your weapon, the B button toggles through your 40mm guns, the Y button toggles through your 20mm guns, X launches your payload, the R button flips your view from behind the plane into the cockpit, and you can hold the L button down to make the plane dive faster and turn sharper. Hey, it's always nice to see a game actually make good use of nearly every button on the control, but unfortunately that doesn't help the gameplay enough to be anything other than a tedious, boring slog. Alright, that might be a bit harsh. There are some neat little touches here, like when you take damage, your status bar has bullet holes in it and you can't see certain stats anymore. That's pretty cool. I guess I just wish this game didn't try to be quote-unquote realistic, and it can't be overstated how much it sucks to fly around without a radar to see where your opponent is. So yeah, Carrier Aces has some good ideas, I like the mission structure, and I really like that there's actual strategy in a game like this, and I can totally see how someone might think this one is a hidden j- I mean a secluded ornament, or a disguised paragon. I just wish the gameplay were more fun, it's always such a chore to try and track down who you're fighting, and it takes a long time to get good at this game, and I'm just not sure if this game warrants that much time. This is one I'd recommend trying out to see if it's your thing. It's not a bad game, it just gets dull and repetitive, even after 20 minutes or so. It's just back and forth between the tactical view and the dogfighting view over and over again. Carrier Aces was never released anywhere else but the Super Nintendo, so if this game catches your interest, you can usually find a loose cartridge for like 10 bucks, but otherwise, you'll have to play this one any way you can. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.